Locked in a closet, covered in a layer of dust, are hundreds of files, pictures, videos, and newspaper clippings documenting paranormal activity and unexplained events. These are the VAPI Archives. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff. And I'm Will. And we're with Virginia Paranormal Investigations. And tonight we're at this house that was built in 1790. It's a house that sits vacant. It sat vacant for almost 10 years at this point. The residents have moved out because of the activity. It's been so frequent in the house, so much things have happened that they decided to just leave it vacant. And they called us out here tonight and said, you're welcome to come out, take a look around the house, and see if you can get to the bottom of some of this activity that's been going on here. Find out what these spirits may want, who they are, why they're here. Will is going to tell you a little bit about the history of the place or the ghost stories that have been seen throughout. Yeah, so in this house behind us, uh, it's been passed through generations pretty much. Uh, house being built in the 1790s. Uh, you had a family that lived here, possibly 9 to 11 people. Um, this building used to have at one point nine chimneys. Uh, right now, it's kind of a shell of what it used to be. Uh, it's just the front part of the house, two-story, simple farmhouse. But it used to be a mansion at one point with several, several rooms. Uh, since the 1790s up through today, uh, as family members have passed on, uh, they can name at least in the past 100 years, at least four or five people that have passed away in this house. All of them by natural causes. Two of them upstairs, two of them downstairs. Uh, so when we go in, our key areas that we're going to be focusing on is upstairs to the left is a room where they've had a few activity. Uh, there's been seen a woman in the left room upstairs laying on the floor whenever you would lay in the bed and sleep. Uh, so hopefully that bed is still there. Uh, in the room to the right when you go upstairs, uh, they've had some activity in there where uh, people have felt really uncomfortable in that room. And uh, something about the room to the left, someone was sitting in a chair and it felt like a burning sensation on their knee. And uh, the team, the paranormal team that happened to be here claimed that when they watched their camera, they had one of the SLS cameras to where they were able to see the stick figures. And they saw a stick figure come up out from underneath the dresser, come over to the person and sit on their lap. It was like in the, the size of a child. So that's what was sitting on his knee, giving him that burning sensation. A woman has gone in here. She claimed that uh, she, she felt like she was being scratched, and sure enough, there was a huge mark on her chest. Uh, it seems to be attached to women uh, from some of the stories that we've heard that the women have been physically touched. Uh, one of them said it felt like her butt was on fire, like someone took a lighter to it and uh, was lighting it up when she was down near the basement. Uh, there is a basement here tonight. Uh, we will be going down in it, uh, probably myself, uh, at one point, we'll close the door and see how that goes. Uh, story for down there, a gentleman went down there by himself, as I will, except he left the light on upstairs. And all of a sudden, while he was down there, the light cut off on him. And he was down there by himself. And this man, huge guy, uh, began to cry. Uh, he felt so alone and uh, felt like something was going to hurt him. So after that, he said that he took some tape and taped up the light switch so that way the spirit couldn't knock it down. Did you hear something? What was that? Was yeah, there was, some, there was something walking over there. What's that right there? Well, oh, it's a right. cat. It oh, is a cat. Okay, okay. All right, so it's not going to be one of those shows where we're jumping all the time, of course. <laughs> we are going to do our walkthrough, though, and I have the keys in my pocket because according to what we've been told, people have come in before. They've been pushed out of the house and locked out. So they said keep the keys in your pocket just in case you get pushed out and they lock the door on you. So... Let's get a look at what this place is inside. It should be pretty interesting. I'm excited. Yeah, you're entering the house through the side door. Oh, that's good. What's the stick? Linda is going in first. No. Because I don't have the key. Oh. <laughs> it's already unlocked. Oh, is it unlocked? Oh, yeah, it sure is. All right. The 
entering the kitchen. Very musty smelling in here from being locked up for so long. Lots of stuff sitting around. Wow. She's right. The wallpaper's atrocious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kind of like it. I'm sure you would. It's like left and just forgotten about. Mm hmm. Have you recorded them? Look out for the spider web as you go through. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. yeah. I forgot the wand, the little mm -hmm. thing she gave me. What's that? Whoa. It's like a little. Something from a tree, possibly? I really hope so. I hope so. Alright, this looks like it would have been the dining room. Again, lots of stuff sitting around. Very 1960s sort of decor going on here. Some leftover Christmas decorations. I can feel the flooring is very... Oh wow, I like the second oh, floor, wow. how you kind of walk around, so it feels oh, like yeah. someone is looking down on you. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's a good so it looks like off to this side we have a living room. Definitely some little critters in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. I mean, everything's still in here. Oh, yeah. look at this. There's even one of those big TVs. Ducks. Oh, Reagan. Nice. Yeah, spider web. <laughs> oh yeah, picture of Reagan. This is this one right here too. Two thousand four. Somebody was big about Reagan, huh? Oh, nice big creature. Oh, yes. that's oh, he's no. dead. Go. All right. I think yeah. maybe there's still more. First floor. There's a room over here. Looks like this could have been maybe a master bedroom. Large piece of furniture over right here. I don't know. Large dark stain on the floor. A lot of family pictures up. She just said, fuck this. Look at all that. Wow. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we do still have furniture in here, the bed. I, you know, bed's still here. I'm really pretty amazed that so far there's no water stains on the no. ceiling. No, that means you, like they've got a good roof. Preserved. It is. It's very well preserved. Quite impressed. And then a bathroom around the corner there. Yeah, the clock. That's in and out. <coughs> you said you want to go upstairs? Yeah. Let's head upstairs. Wow, they stopped the calendar in November 2012. There's definitely something that happened to these stairs. The one on the right, she said to worry about, right? Yeah, the right was the worst. The left is where two people have died. The left one, oh, with that old picture. And then what do we have across the hall here? Is there another room? This is rather strange, kind of an odd waste of space, isn't it? Well, I've, you've got to figure this probably did something else, but then they destroyed part of the house. Oh, that's right, yeah. Gone somewhere There's some water yeah. damage up there. Or just some paint scratches. This would be a really nice house to be in. Really done. Oh, chef. So in here we have a lot of papers on the floor. Something fell through the ceiling. We've got a lot of damage in here. Not much. This is really cool. January 1998. Yeah. Oh, wow. I know, I don't want to get close to it. You see? Yeah. 
Okay. Going down to the basement. Yeah, it's a big step from the second to the last to the floor, but the rest of them feel pretty secure. How old this wine is. This wine is from 1988. Oh, there's still wine down there? Yeah. Well, this last step down here, don't step up. That was a good year. 1988. Yeah. Be well, very. It says 1991 on the ground right here. Oh, yeah, watch out. Watch your head. Yeah, this is all like um, jams and jellies right here. Don't step on that. And we want to watch for oh, snakes up in the rafters too as we're huh? coming around down here. Yeah, check for them. Look at this. It's an actual tree. Wow. That is holding this thing up. That's pretty cool. Isn't that neat? They had children in this house. Look at this. I'm sure at one time they did. What's this oh. little door over here? Oh, creepy little door. Should I perhaps take a look? I think so. Oh, man. There's stuff in here? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's just glue. Gotta that's make it. sure there's no snakes up there. Clear it. Oh, okay, that goes under the house. That's like the water main fix and stuff yeah. like that. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. Wow. Over here. You want to fix these, uh, this HVAC stuff? Nope. These vents and stuff? It's not fixable. I can't place. believe all the wine's still down here. How? Yeah, this is a neat wine cellar. It really is. It is. You think it's still drinkable? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How old did you say it was, Will? 88. 88. Sweet. Yeah. Now look at this wall over here. You can see how it was, That's how it's been scary. fixed over the years. Oh, like yeah. it was originally this rock, and then That's they came cool. back and they kind of spackled it. Spackling is that what it's called? Well, yeah, it's probably cement to some extent. It's crazy. Or grout. Yeah. Maybe some grout. This looks like it was an old stone foundation that maybe they've just filled in the gaps over the years. This is quite a place, so it is. as Will mentioned earlier, this is going to be probably one of the most unique basements that I think you probably sat in alone. Yeah, because like sometimes uh, they're carpeted closets and stuff like that, but this, this is a basement. This reminds me a lot of my parents' basement. Oh, where does I got it? That really good EVP. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is exactly what it looks like. It's not. I have to say, it's not particularly scary down here, though. I don't. I haven't felt anything no. In this house. There hasn't been anything. I haven't had any bad feelings here. Now, when, when, comfortable, actually. When, it you, is. when you guys have left me alone in here and it's dark, yeah, it might be a different. That story. might be a different story. Well, like, yeah. I mean, like as I've walked away from you guys with the flashlights, it's a little creepy. Is I gotta say the same thing. Yeah. Do what? Is this where that dude was crying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and, because that light switch that's up there, someone turned it off. It went off. Yeah. And I gotta say the same thing. Like when I was downstairs. And you guys all went upstairs. I was just trying to get some footage, and I panned down towards the doorway. And it, it was a little, it was a little eerie. Like once the group walks away, mm -hmm. and you kind of actually feel the house, it does have an eerie feel to it. So I'm picturing like if if you could imagine being in this basement, in the dark, while no one else is in this house. I mean, there's not. We're not talking about people being right outside the door here. We're talking about no one else is in this house. You got to go up these stairs through the washroom through the kitchen, and out that side door mm -hmm. to get to people. That's right. You start to really feel, like I said, when you're alone in a place like this and it's quiet and there's not other people, you really start to feel the ambience, mm -hmm. the ambience of the house. Yeah. Hmm. We did our initial walk through the house, kind of got our impressions of certain rooms. None of us are mediums or anything like that, but still sometimes if there's a certain area of the house that has a heavy feel to it or you get a strange sensation in, we don't want to ignore those feelings because uh, it is possible that there's something there affecting us. We're going to go through and get our baseline sweeps done right now and we're going to be using a K2 meter and a tri-field meter. Now on these devices there really shouldn't be any spikes throughout this house because there's absolutely no power coming to the house. So we're going to go through, we're going to mark where the spikes are if there are any, which there shouldn't be, but just to confirm that we're going to do this baseline sweep and then throughout the investigation, we'll look for any spikes, which would signify something's there that wasn't there during our initial baseline. Look at that. 
Yes, it is. It's going pretty well. Oh, oh well, okay, let's see what happens. Maybe it's my phone. No, it's still going. Oh. Not sure what would be causing that right here. I don't either. Doesn't How about in comparison to the tri-field meter? Is that going off at all? It's just hitting 1.2, 1.3. And that's higher than it should be as well. I usually see that like a, a point two. Point this thing is hitting red. It is. Hmm. How ironic. Are we having well, fun Well, that thing is going crazy. Look at that. Are we having fun yet? I'm gonna handshake, guys. My name is Will. <laughs> no, no one shake my hand. Okay. If there's someone here, make it stop lighting up. When things here, drag it to the basement. Oh, it went crazy. Mm -hmm. He didn't mean that, I promise. If you're really here, walk away and make this thing stop lighting up. No power lines overhead. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. oh. Yeah, come on. I'm gonna cut my phone off. Will that do just something? For, just for a quick second. If it's near the phone, it will, but yeah. I just want to be sure. Oh, no, it's still going. All right, go over there. Me? Yeah. Still going. That's weird. Okay. Now it's stuck. Yeah? Is there something on you? Like your phone? Try this one here. No. Try this one here. Nope. You said that it, um, it's like attracted to the women. That's what he said. Yeah, he said uh, a few women were affected. It was a female that saw the lady laying on the floor, the apparition. It was a female that got scratched. Oh, there you go. I'm going crazy again. It was a female that felt so fire or she heat fire? under. No, she felt like someone was almost like someone oh, was holding yeah. a lighter behind her. Your bottom, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You want to try to light switch just to be sure there's no power? Am I just a steady one? Yeah, give, yeah, give it a try just to show. I haven't even tried it. Another horseshoe for good luck. It's like, do you have any phone anything in your pocket? Yeah, I got a phone in my pocket. Let me try walking away here. Still going. Yeah, it's still going. Yeah. Oh, wow, now I'm at a point nine. My phone's off. Steady EMF level through the house. And we don't usually see this in houses that have power. Oh, yeah, it's going red. Can our camera be setting it off? My camera? No, because she's too far away. And, and also, I mean, we don't have the conditions any different than we normally do as far as when we're doing the baselines. It's just a cricket. Like she's normally taking the pictures and... The person carrying it usually has a phone in their pocket, but as long as they don't hold it on that side or near their phone. Well, I actually cut my, I'll cut my phone off. Well, it's still on you, though. But it's off, though. Like, it's not gonna, see, it's right next to my phone. It's not doing nothing. Yeah, like, let me give you an example um, with my phone here, okay? And we showed this last night. So, well, right now it's still lighting up, so it's going to be hard to see. But if my phone's... Oh, you guys hear that? The rocking chair. You hear that? Like a rocking chair. You sure it's not her footsteps? Could be. I was walking underneath near the bottom of the stairs. You there. see that flashlight? Yeah. Flash in the room, see that light? Well, the thing is rocking. 
So is that K2 meter quiet right now? Yeah, it's at a, one, it's a one point. No, it's steady. 1.1 1 .1 actually now. So and it's that down there. And the K2 meter is too. Let's try it with the phone just to see how close it's got to be. So if I put my phone up to it now, it's not going off. But if I light my phone up, that'll make it go up. Okay. My phone's off, man. It's not. Oh, yeah. But still, like, like, my, like my phone's off right now. See? So it shouldn't be going off. This is the room where, this is the right room. There it goes spiking again. I just heard something in the other room. Went from a one, one point, zero point nine to a two, two point eight. We should probably check. Will? Yeah. Okay. That's me. <laughs> you gotta announce yourself, dude. <laughs> Come on, guys. We want a party. Where's the alcohol? Jack and Coke. Pepsi and Jim Beam. I want a Jack and Coke. So we, Will and I were just in the bedroom to the left and when we, we walked over to the closet and we were just talking and it sounded like there was like a woman that whispered to my right, like closer to the bed. We couldn't quite hear what she said and my voice recorder wasn't going at the time. Um, but we started asking a few questions and the K2 meter was lighting up all the way up to red and it lit up to red when we heard that whisper. Hmm. That's interesting. Do Her K2 meter in? right here went up to 20. Wow. And you can see it was a random spike because it's not consistent. It's not doing that now. Oh, this is red now. So there's definitely some irregularities with the EMF detectors. They're spiking in certain places. They're spiking ridiculously high. I mean, higher than they would if you held them right up against an appliance or an electrical outlet. No power coming to this house, so there's really no reason for it. They're spiking and they're not there. I think, given the circumstances, it's a perfect environment for an EVP session. Mm -hmm. So what we should do is get the REM pod, bring it up here. Since these devices are being interacted with, the REM pod will actually give off that electromagnetic field and we can see if anything actually comes close to it, interferes with it. And at the same time, just do an all-out EVP session, since Will already heard an audible voice firsthand. I definitely want to do an EVP session in the Yeah, I think you two Is should... little boy? You two should come up and do it, since you're getting the activity in there, Sorry. you two are. Okay. You want to set the rent pot up here, too? Like by the threshold, while we're in the room? Yeah. All right. So let's go downstairs, uh, grab what we need, and come back up. All right. All right. All right. So right about now, we're gonna go back upstairs to the room on the left. Um, there's been a lot of activity in there. The K2 meter has went off several times. It's probably can get it to go off right now on camera, but normally it doesn't when someone's watching. But also, me and Will are gonna go up there because we've heard whispers, we've heard noises, and so hopefully, I'm trying to get that chair to rock. Hopefully we'll catch something, you never know. Alright. Right. So, it is uh, me and Will. We are in the bedroom to the left. In this room, uh, there have been two people that have passed away, uh, most likely in this bed. It's said that if you lay in this bed, to the ground, to either the left or right, there's supposed to be a woman in a white dress who is supposed to be laying next to you. Uh, so we have the REM pod laying on the, or we have the voice recorder laying on the bed, as well as the tri-field meter. Also, out here in the doorway, we have the REM pod. So we're going to go ahead and invite 
whoever is in this house to come join us in the room. And so, guys, we promise that red thing is not going to hurt you. The only thing it's going to do is just let us know you're here. So I'm going to stand here on this side of the bed and kind of keep the camera on the REM pod. Let's go ahead and go lights out. All right. All right. So it's going to be very dark in here. The only light that we have is just from the camera and the REM pod. So my name is Will. My name is Will. And we are here to talk to anyone that's in the house. We want to listen. So tell me, what is your name? Removing my hood. I heard a whisper earlier, was that you? Yeah, the K2 meter lighting up. If you're here right now, could you go over by that red thing and just stick your hand over it? You don't have to touch it and I promise you it will not hurt you. How many people are here with us? I just got chills. Yeah, me too, man. Did you? Yeah. We really want you to make that red thing go off. If you go over and touch that red light, that'll let us know that you're here. As a matter of fact, that red light, that's the temperature gauge. Okay. As a matter of fact, that red light, I would like to use it to be able to communicate with you. So if you touch it and turn it green, then it'll let me know that the answer to any of my questions is yes. If the answer is no, do not touch the light. So if you understand what I'm saying, can you touch that red light for me? What's the, what's the temperature keep going up? Because it's dropping? Yeah, the temperature is definitely dropping in here. Uh, we don't have a device that lets us know the temperature, but I definitely have gotten a chill. Yeah, me too. Um, my it heart feels, is freaking racing. <laughs> it's, it's a lot colder in here than what it was before. Are you a child? Right before that went off, I heard a noise down the hallway. Go ahead and snap a picture. That was my stomach. What does that mean? That shouldn't be the battery dying. Because we just replaced that. I want you to just talk to us. Or even show yourself. I would like to see you. Will you let us see you? Can you make a noise for us? Can you give us a sign that you're here with us? Every time that goes off, the thing starts going crazy. Yeah, I noticed that. Every time the REM pod goes off, this K2 meter starts lighting up. And I've also noticed the tri-field meter, that's been at a 0.8 very steadily, which is odd because we've been in apartments and homes where it goes up to like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 at the highest. But that's at a 0 0.8 in a house where there's no like, electricity at all. So what do like the different noises mean? The temperature drops again? Because it is getting colder in here again. Yeah. Will and Will just came down from upstairs doing an EVP session and they mentioned that there was a little bit of activity with the temperature, temperature fluctuations, and at the same time that the REM pod indicated a temperature change, they felt a chill. 
It is believed that when spirits are attempting to manifest, they'll actually draw energy from the atmosphere and create these cold spots. That's why we measure the temperature. But we're in here at the dining room table and we're going to do an EVP session. Now we're going to break out the K2 meter, which has had quite a bit of activity so far. We also have the tri-field meter, and in the doorway, we have the REM pod. So if anybody decides to come down from upstairs and come in here to join us at the table, that REM pod should indicate they're coming. Now, already the K2 meter is going off here. This candle is not ours. This candle is sitting on the table. Could it be a random house candle that was used to see, for somebody to see their way around the house? Or could it have been part of something? They didn't mention that there were quite a few seances that were conducted in this house, and a Ouija board that was used. Several things that could potentially open up a doorway that could allow an entity from the other side to cross the veil and linger in this area. Or even worse, open up some sort of a portal. I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. Aside from the two of us, we'd like to know how many are in this house right now. The tri-field is fluctuating greatly. No, right? I, is that thing right as that was lighting up? I will also say this lit up ten times and then stopped. So I'm going to keep track of that to see if this is indeed random or if we're getting some sort of responses here. Could you possibly tell us one of your names? Just trying to make sure that we're not seeing the same pattern over and over again. Right. And it. Ten. Ten, and then quiet. Last time, it went up two lights. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're not seeing the same pattern. Right. It's not lighting up to red the same amount of times. It's not, but it it's weird. Like, it it's almost reminiscent of Morse code. Like it's, like it's trying to do some sort of, like, communication through numbers or, you know, because it was lighting up to the orange right. a bunch of times. Then it lit up only to the green a couple times. And I also noticed that there were a lot of books in this house related to war. There were. A lot. There was a lot of Rush Limbaugh books, too. <laughs> Could you do us a favor? Could you light this up to red? And see, keep it there for as long as you can. We need you to do this to show us that you're trying to communicate with us. And that this meter is not being set off by some environmental factor. I heard something. If there's anybody upstairs, you're welcome to come down and join us at the table. We'd love to talk to you. I feel like you might be trying to tell us something. If you say it, our voice recorder here may be able to pick up your voice. It stopped. The fluctuations on the tri-field stopped. The flashing of the K2 stopped.
Why is that? I mean, keep in mind there's no power in this house at all. And there we are, it's going up again. For it to be fluctuating like this, there's something beeping. It's the REM pod. I did ask it to go over by the... Oh, that one, Jad just jumped up to four point something. Yeah, these are going crazy, yeah, and the REM pods crazy, beeping yeah. at the same time, the temperature fluctuations. Yeah, which it shouldn't, because I don't think it's any colder in here than it was. Is the light red or blue? I think it's been red. Red, yeah. It's going up. Well, that's good. It's a little bit cold in here. Here's what I'm thinking. This went silent for a while. As soon as the REM pod started beeping, a temperature fluctuation, this and the tri-field meter both spiked. If spirits do draw energy from the atmosphere and create cold spots, perhaps the spirit was standing over there. When they came over here to interact with these devices, it got warmer. Oh. And that's why the... Right. That's why the temperature started going up. Could be. Because it was interesting that that started beeping at the same time these went off. So for some reason, it got warmer over there. What? No, I, th I thought I just heard something. Like what? I, I don't know. It's a strange noise. Did it sound anything like a deep fried cheese steak sandwich digesting? <laughs> Maybe. That's exactly what it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. But you and may the be right. bathrooms don't work in this house. No, they don't. The toilet's out on the front porch, and yeah. it's not hooked up. And we'd have to go up there. But there is a toilet. <laughs> yeah. So I think you might have a good point. I mean, it makes perfect sense. I mean, now that thing's not going off anymore. This is the K2 bit has been spiking. Uh, I don't... I don't know. It just definitely seems like there's something interacting with these devices, and that... Perhaps it was here the moment we stepped out of the truck with the devices in hand and turned them on. Because, I mean, from from the moment we turned the K2 meter on, it was it was going nuts. And it's, it's just kind of strange. Um, I would definitely like to make it clear that we're not here to harm you or to harm anybody or anything in your home. Um... We're simply here to find out who you are. Some of the living members of this family would like to know who you are and why that you're he why you're here. Just simply out of curiosity. I'd also like to talk about with our intentions. A lot of the people that come into this house, they can't see you for some reason. We don't know why. But we're hoping that if you can come near some of these devices, you can use them to talk to us. Now, I'm going to ask you a question that's going to sound a little strange. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in spirits? Starting to spike. Very. Do you believe in demons? One more time, just so I can verify the response. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in spirits? Do you believe in demons? Do you believe in God? Do you know who Jesus is? One of the things we do when we come into a house 
is we assess it. And we see if there's any potential threat of there being demons or dark spirits in the house. You live here, so you would know this more so than anybody else. Are there any demons in this house? Have you seen any demons or seen anything that you thought to be a demon? The little red light on the REM pod is going off, but it's not an auditory, it's not giving an auditory response. It's that, it's like the little temperature light. So when I say we come into a house and we find that there's nothing with ill intent in the house, we leave. Could you confirm that there's nothing with ill intent in this house? That there's no demons? That there's really no need for us to take measures to push them out of this house? We wrapped up our EVP session in the dining room, and there were some interesting things as we mentioned throughout the video, but I kind of want to talk about my line of questioning. One thing I tried to do was to trigger a response. If there is a family member here, if there is a human that is here, I wanted them to tell me if they believe in ghosts, if they believe in spirits, if they believe in demons. Because you think about it in the spiritual world, if there are human spirits and there are demonic spirits in one location, the demonic spirits could very well uh, be terrorizing these human spirits. I also, if there was a demonic spirit here, I wanted to give them the opportunity to give us the green light to leave. Because I figured if there was a demon here, and we said, hey, if you can confirm, you being a human spirit, can confirm that there's no demons here, we'll leave. I figured if there was a demon here, they'd probably light up the device so that we'd think, oh, it was a human spirit, let's leave. Unless they already know what we're thinking, which is possible. So you guys were sitting out in the truck. Yeah, anything interesting while you were out there, outside? I know there's been some interesting stuff outside so far. I mean, I was just listening to the voice recorder and uh, didn't really get anything from our session of being inside. Uh, there's two possible EVPs that I've gotten so far since I've been listening to our whole journey here. Uh, well, I'll have to keep reviewing the audio and just kind of see as the night goes on. I, uh, I did capture a weird photo, man. That's not in any other, any other, the other photos I, I took. So if you take a look right there, what is that? You can see a circle head and like some, some sharp elbows, arm. And it's not in any of the other photos. No, that's creepy. What is that? Is that maybe a fan or something like a with a rounded? It could be. Where yeah. is, where, what room was that in? Do you know? This was, so we were in the room. You go upstairs to the left. So it's the room to the right. So you have to see if there's anything in there that could have made that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. I see what you're looking at though with the, when you describe it as the shoulders and the eyes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's not something you want to see in the mirror. Basically, when, Same we, stuff. when we were recording the gas grub and ghosts, we were recording a little segment right there. And you've probably already seen that video by now. Um, there was a noise that happened out here in the hallway. So what we're going to do is we're going to split up because there's quite a few noises. Um, these guys are going to sit down here in the living room, perfectly quiet. And Will and I are gonna go upstairs and conduct an EVP session. Right. Um, that way we can kind of pinpoint where the noise is coming from. Yep. So you guys down here, if something else is thrown in a room downstairs, go mm -hmm. investigate, find out what it was. Uh, if anything happens upstairs, Jeff and I will go investigate and see what it was. Okay. Um, if, if it's not us making that noise, we'll probably be able to tell because someone will scream. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> serious. After this, maybe we drive up to the house and go pee. Yeah, I'm okay. that too. Yeah. Well, I've already peed myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, stuff seems to happen when I'm in here. Yeah, I was sitting in this chair, so. We can do that again. Okay. I'll sit on the bed. All right, I'm Ooh, Jeff. This is dark. I'm Will. <laughs> and aside from the two of us, 
set light. I assume that's some flashing light. Up there. Uh, yeah, I would think so. We'd like to know. We have our friends downstairs. There's three people downstairs. Is there anyone else in this house with us? You've given me quite a fright tonight. Um, I don't know if that was your intention. Uh, but if it is, uh, it's definitely working. So. Voices downstairs. So, do it again. Let us know that you're in this room with us. Quite a bit of temperature fluctuations down there, it sounds like. It was doing that in the bedroom up here, too, but there's quite a bit of cold spots that come through here. Yeah, and I've noticed it's actually colder in the house than it is outside. Yeah. Stairs? Yeah. It's been spiking up to the red, and I mean, it stayed up in the red for like minutes at a time. Yeah, I believe it. It's just... Like, see? This freezing. is what it's doing. And then she and said something, something touched her. That let something like trace half of my spine. Hmm. And then that temperature sensor, the, cake, the, the REM pod actually went off, like fully went off. Yeah, we heard that. And then the temperature sensor's been going off. See, there it goes again. It's like... Turning on voice recorder, Jeff and I about to sit at the table. Over here. I'm gonna take uh, pictures. How do you feel about us being here in this house? We're just here to find out who you are and if there's anything we can do to help you. Perhaps you have some loved ones that you haven't seen in a while. And there's a message that you'd like us to tell them. Because we will be leaving the house here. And we could relay this message to your family that you want to see them. That you'd like them to come to this house. Is there a particular person? Is there a particular person that you would like me to tell to come and visit you? I'm curious if earlier you are making all that noise and racket. Um, is it because you don't want me in this house? All right, so we just came back inside after going up to the, the house up the hill. And we walked in and we saw this lying on the ground. Oh. That is the table salt that was on the coffee table here in the living room. We come back inside and it's laying there. So something picked that up and put it over here. Wow. Yeah, I really wish that we had a camera like facing this way. Yeah. It's all about we surveillance. We would have seen it. But that was definitely moved. Was that fan always there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, we'll have to listen to that voice recorder that's on the table, see if anything was said. You would at least hear it move over to here. You would think so. Yeah. Yeah, unless something set it down. Yeah. Like, picked it up and walked it over. Mm hmm But it would definitely make a noise hitting the carpet. Do you want us out of here? What did you, do you think it said? A little bit? Maybe a little bit. I thought it said maybe a little bit. What is your name? Do 
In the name of God, tell me your name. Which one of us would you like to go sit in the basement? Hey, that's going on. Sure is. And I don't have the camera on it. Here. Then, like, someone, like, picked it up on us. Yeah. Hey, take the camera, take the camera. Like, that was it, got picked up. That's when you finally touched it. Yeah. Yeah. Think how to make the light turn green. The K2 meter's dying. On the table here, it's dying. Can you try telling us your name? What should we call you? Which one of us do you want in the basement alone? Just sounded, all of you? It sounded like Will. It did sound like all of you. I, I, heard all I of definitely you. heard Will. Yeah. Right. I just want to get it. Come on, I'm just here. It's like, like, no, no joke. Saw what? Yeah, if you want to sit on the couch. Like a laser light? Yeah, you need, yeah. So I was saying, we need to think about something to do to maybe get some spirits to communicate with us and Will jumped forward and said hey how about if I go down to the basement by myself actually I suggested that but ladies and gentlemen for the first time in history Will declined Will said there's no chance in hell that I'm going down there in that basement <laughs> by myself am I telling the truth he's telling the truth <laughs> um, I, I've already gone down there once by myself and when I did, there was a definite noise upstairs. Uh, every time I've been in here by myself, there's been noises, there's things that have been moved around. And uh, I, th I think I've done it already. I've had enough. Okay. Hey, hey Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. I'm still in training. Yeah, he's still, still in training. training. You got to get initiated. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we'll go outside and... Uh... Take it away. So who's going down there? Uh, he and I? Me and you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was y'all too. Yeah. All right. So Linda and I are about to walk down in the basement, and we want to take you guys with us. That's such a short little door. Yeah. No, nope, white does not work. <laughs> you were hoping. I was you? curious. I mean, uh huh. I had to know. Oops. Okay. Going downstairs. Okay. Nothing crazy down there. <clears throat> no, nothing crazy. Take a. As soon as we got down in the basement. That camera shut off, the door slammed, and we hear noises. I think that's rain. Is that rain? Yeah. Maybe on the stoop. But something closed. Do you want to go see what it was? No, I'm pretty sure I know it was the door. It was that door. It was that door. It had to have been. Yeah. All right, so let's go back here. My name is Will. And I'm Linda. And as you know, uh, we are here to talk to you. We've heard you quite a lot tonight. Can you make another noise for us? That was my stomach. <laughs> mm, yeah, mine's going crazy too. If you touch that, could you touch it for me again? 
Can you touch that red light? Do you have a message for the family that used to live here? Over here, there's some wine bottles. Do those belong to you? is incredibly significant. It is. I rarely see that thing go above the green. And it went green, orange, blue. Blue. Blue is the highest. Blue is the highest, didn't it? Yeah. It gradually went to it. Yeah. Are you coming down here with us? If there's someone down here with us, Make a noise. Move something. So a little debrief about what just happened in the basement. So Linda and I, we open this door right here and we head down in the basement. Uh, as soon as we get down there, all of a sudden the camera cuts off. Of course, as I put the camera against my body, the little view screen closes. But when that happens, you open it back up and it cuts right back on. But the camera cut off, and at the exact same time, this door up here closed shut. And we're thinking, oh man. Did you hear something? Yeah, I thought I did. And we're thinking, oh man, uh, maybe you guys closed it on your way out to kind of prank us mm -hmm. or whatever. And then we heard footsteps. So we're like, okay, so they closed it. Must it must have been them. They must yeah. have walked out. And so we're down there, we're asking a couple questions. And then all of a sudden, the REM pod does something very interesting. I've never seen it do before. It lit up green and then it slowly moved to orange, and then it slowly moved to blue, and then from blue to orange to green, and then off. It was like something went close to it, touched slowly. it all the way, and then slowly moved away from it. Yeah. I've never seen wow. it like that before. No, I, I yeah. don't even think I've ever seen it light up to the blue, at no. a, ever. And we set it, it on the stairs hmm. as you're coming down. And so we grab the camera, we hear you guys come in. So we're like, all right, let's head upstairs. So we grab the camera, the voice recorder, the REM pod, we walk upstairs, we come out, and of course the doors close, we assume that's probably what happened. We go to open the door and we can't, because one of these rolling chairs were pushed in front of the door to where we couldn't open it. The, probably the same rolling chair that was out in the hallway before. And you guys didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't close the door, you didn't put the chair in front of it. Maybe those footsteps that we heard was either the spirit or entity Could be moving walking, the chair moving or the walking chair. and yeah. pushing the chair in front of the door. But we we clearly heard it. Did you catch those? Did you catch that on the on the camera? camera now? Yeah. You're, you're doing you, all right. What's your? It's that stove, that heater. Oh, like somebody's walking past. Like how it makes the noise mm -hmm. when you walk past that? Yeah. Have you guys heard uh, like a conversation upstairs? Mm -mm. Or like someone talking? No. no. Did you? Yeah, I've been here a couple times. I heard something out by the maybe truck. Heard maybe when, when we were out by the truck again, when we were yeah. getting the stuff out of the truck, we mm -hmm. heard it sounded like someone out there, a brief voice. Mm -hmm. Couldn't make out what it said. That's weird. Mm-hmm. 